Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another show match in the BSM Brawl. We have another very exciting matchup for you guys. Another fresh map pool between two similarly skilled players. If you guys watched last week, it was a very exciting matchup that took us all the way to tiebreaker. And funnily enough, the players that were involved last week are actually going to be in this commentary booth. Hopefully you guys are enjoying. My name is Sparky, and I am joined by none other than Dynascape. Dyna, how are you doing? Doing great, Sparky. Excited to see this one. Um, if it's anything like the last one that we had, uh, this is one for the ages, right? For sure, yeah. I, I think we, we are the least biased in terms of how well that last match went last weekend. I think we can both attest to that. Oh, definitely. And I think... My unbiased opinion just says that it was probably the best match ever played, right? For sure, but regardless, this is probably just going to be a tribute to how well that last match went. We have two very uh, well-known U.S. tournament players. We have Sun Apple going up against Underscore Seth in this matchup. Yes, Sun Apple and Seth. These two have a bit of history together as both... Um, enemies and comrades on the battlefield. Seth and Sun Apple originally meeting in BLTMT, where Seth was seated 8th and Sun Apple was seated 9th, and they met each other in the round of 16 losers bracket, where Sun Apple got off a very convincing 5-1 victory over Seth. So definitely some history there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think another thing to attest to is that uh, both these players experienced in uh, very high pressure tournament situations. Like you said, they have met before in 1v1s, but in team tournaments, I think they have been on teams together before. Oh yeah, they were um, on the same team together in Tournament 4, I believe, um, paired up with Hyper. They were seed around like 41, got knocked out in um, losers round of 16. But I mean, for tournament four, that's very, very good. And of course, Seth, um, this year, last year's 40M4 uh, team captain, however you want to say it. And Sun Apple, obviously, making big waves as a um, player for this year's MWC, picked for his notable LN accuracy. Yeah, for sure. So uh, both these players able to handle very big situations and able to handle very hard maps uh, as this map pool uh, will come to show. Right now we are just going to get through our second warm up here. This one uh, going to be Sun Apples coming in here. I think they made this custom just for uh, this matchup. Kind of like how Seth did theirs uh, for this matchup as well with that earlier warm up. Yeah, you love to see the custom warm-ups come out, and <laughs> well, you can see this is a 400 BPM map, so it's got to be good, right? Yeah, for sure. You can see what uh, what's in store for us here, uh, like you were alluding to. Sun Apple, very well acquainted with LN chart. To be interesting to see if this was just like a rice dump chart, but. Judging by the star rating, maybe not that inflated with LNs. It remains to be seen. Yeah. Um, in this matchup, gonna see Sun Apple try to stay within the confines of the LN pool, whereas Seth has quite a bit of rice to choose from. But I mean, after looking through the entirety of this pool, uh, some of these rice picks are very hard. Um, one thing to note for the viewers is that about half of them are mid-game picks, whereas the other half are late-game. I'll try to point them out whenever possible, but definitely um, remains to be seen whether or not Seth, Sun Apple like their own picks on the mid-game side of things or the late-game side of things. Yeah, I think... Uh, the map pool was balanced very delicately. The amount of overlap between these two players uh, might become very apparent as this match progresses. I know Ellen, uh, Seth is 
an absolutely no slouch when it comes to the LN side of the pool. Uh, probably able to contest on Apple's accuracy on the more mid-game oriented picks. It remains to be seen, but you would imagine uh, once the difficulty ramps up just a little bit, that might be where Sun Apple uh, can come into their own and maybe take some points uh, on those later game oriented picks and see where Seth uh, finds their comfort. Maybe the hybrids might come in as a bit of a tiebreaker before the tiebreaker needs to come out. Yeah, I definitely am eyeing a couple of the tiebreakers for either one to pick. And like you said, with Sun Apple, I think with Seth for these rice picks, uh, one thing to note is that Seth is just oddly good. He has this special skill where he minimizes misses as much as possible and so i think that's going to be a very very big thing um throughout this entire match um, just like we saw with last week in our game i think misses will play a huge role in the mid game picks so seth is definitely one where i expect to just uh minimize it and when sun apple was playing in the vlt mtmt tournament uh, one thing that we noted a couple of times when we were coming together for his matches was that sometimes Sun Apple would drop uh, quite a bit on the mid-game picks, so uh, just something to watch out for. Yeah, for sure. And as this warm-up comes to an end, we see Seth picking it up here. Might be a little bit of a deterrent in terms of um, what kind of skill set Sun Apple wants to try and challenge here. So we will be taking a look at the map pool relatively shortly once we get the match proceedings underway. The players are going to roll. And this is going to be a best of uh, best of 13, first to seven. Going to be picking up the victory here. Oh yeah, that's going to be a very long set. Um, so buckle up, guys, because we've got a huge one. For sure, and quite a bit of variance in terms of uh, the maps chosen for this particular matchup. Here we have some, like you were saying, some more late game oriented picks, some more mid game oriented picks. Be interesting to see where everybody decides and where the bands are going to wind up. Yeah, Sun Apple with a very strong 94, and Sun Apple is gonna have free reign over whether or not he wants to pick or protect first or second. So LM4 going to be the first protect here to Hutanashi. Going to be protected from the ban. Unsurprising given that it's not Apple's LM proficiency. It's going to be interesting to see what Seth decides to protect here. Yeah, I uh, interviewed both players before their the match, and Sanapo did say that he really, really likes the song, and I can't blame him, it is very funky. Uh, can't wait to see him pick it. For sure, and Seth opting to go for a little bit of tech here. Anti-function going to be their protect in this regard. I believe this was used in Tournament 4. Or three, one of the two. I know this was in tournaments. I just can't remember which edition it was. So Seth gonna be up to ban here. Gonna be Sludge being removed here. Unfortunate, that song is very good. It's going to be, oh, now that I see it, the cursed version was actually brought yeah. up. Okay, I understand now why it was banned. That is yeah, a good ban. Definitely. Do not, <laughs> do not want to mess with that. And and it kind of makes sense too, right? Because Sludge was um, the lower diff, at least, was the round of 16 LN pick for this year's MWC. And I was looking at the scores, Sun Apple got almost a 991 on that. And even though, you know, the LN in this version is way, way tighter and the releases are much more awkward, it's still the, that same concept. And so, you know, with that familiarity, I totally understand Seth wanting to ban that.
yeah, it's not Apple responding by getting rid of another tech pick. Uh, Terminal 11, very known for their awkward music. Undici going to be removed here. And it's not Apple going to opt to go straight for the protect here. So Toho Tanashi going to be the pick here to start this match off. Wow, straight out of the gate, we have Sun Apple taking his protect. No time wasted. This is Totonashi, Tonoshi. Um, this is uh, quite mixed, I would say, as an LN pick. And it is one of the, I believe, medium or mid game picks. So definitely something that Seth can overtake Sun Apple in, but we'll have to see. Yeah, right out of the gates, both these players are going to be able to maintain some pretty good accuracy right out of the gates on Apple with that 99.8. You'd imagine as the map progresses, things are going to even out just a little bit here. But that's falling a little bit behind here, 99.7. Still within catching range. We'll see how uh, they handle the later portions of this map. And one thing to note is that um, out of the, all the other LN picks, um, this is the only mid-game pick as well. The Sludgeming Band, all of the other three picks are considered late game for Sun Apple and Seth. So I would say that this is a big one for Seth to pick up, especially as the first pick, Sun Apple's Protect, the first point of the match. Definitely huge. But with Sun Apple at a 99.7 and Seth slightly behind at a 99.38 halfway into the map, we're gonna need to see some of uh, that misaction on Sun Apple's side of things. And uh, Seth needs to see this most likely. Yeah, without a doubt, last third of the map still to go. Sun Apple fake picking up a couple 200s gonna damage her actually just a little bit here, but still holding us at a 99.7 range well on course for a very good score. And as it stands, both players holding on to their FCs. Last part of the map still to go. Seth picking up the pace just a little bit here, recovering just ever so slightly, finding a couple of 300 rushes here and there on the release. It's nothing too bad. Still able to hold on to the FCs. And as I said, they do find the break, and that is going to be the nail in the coffin on the pick. They were able to keep within striking distance with that miss is going to help balloon the lead for Sun Apple going into the last portion of the map. And oh my goodness, what is this accuracy from Sun Apple to start this map off? Oh yeah, unbelievable performance by Sun Apple picking up that 99.7 just over the echelon to get a 990 and also almost a V1SS to boot. Excuse oh my goodness, that 1-200! The only blemish on a very ridiculous run. That is, that is insane. I, I, if that's going to be the the level that Sun Apple is going to be uh, approaching this match at, then oh my goodness, Seth has their work cut out for them. I can imagine they're going to opt to go into that top side of the map pool as we try and get the uh, point totals corrected for you guys. Don't want to see any inadvertent victory screens. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no uh, foretelling of uh, the results like last time. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get that stream reload. Alrighty, there we go. So, right here. Alrighty, so it looks like we're back. We do have the correct point totals on screen now. And Seth wasting no time as expected going into that upper half of the map pool. It is going to be Frictional Nevada coming out. Gonna have to go for a little bit of tech here. Yeah, and a quick shout out to Bonk Me for uh, the versatility, being able to handle anything that comes your way. Um, but with that being said, uh, Fictional Nevada 1.2. Um, I have notes for every song, but this one just kind of has, yep, it's a Venetian Snares song, all right? So, I mean, you can imagine what's coming up. Yeah, for sure. I uh, have fond memories of this song. I'm sure it's the same chart, but. Uh, Hearing this song on FFR uh, brings back 
sound memories hearing it here. All 1.2, I can imagine this is utterly ridiculous. Oh, definitely. I was kind of just like tapping along to all the songs with auto on and it's just like, ah, oh, this one's a bit hard. <laughs> imagine if we had to play this. Yeah, I'd rather not. And uh, this is one of the late game picks. So definitely something where I don't expect uh, the best scores out of both of them. In fact, double FCs would be out of the realm of possibility right now as Sun Apple does take the first drop. However, Seth does trade it back. Um, and it looks like Seth is actually struggling quite a bit, hovering over that 95, almost at an A rank, while Sun Apple is at a 97. Yeah, and, a, and it's not a long map by any stretch of the imagination. That 1.2x rate makes it a lot shorter, clocking it just over a minute and a half. And right now, Sun Apple is taking full advantage as it stands. 97.8 for them, 96.4 for Seth. That can change in an instant. Any bad burst, kind of like that from Sun Apple, could change the flow of this match, especially as Seth is starting to develop a little bit of combo here, able to break that 400 combo cap, able to read their way through these very awkward bursts that Sunapple continues to struggle here. And there's last quarter of maps still to go. If Sunapple keeps breaking, this could immediately go over to Seth despite that 1% accuracy advantage. And there's that special skill I was talking about. Seth is so good when it comes to minimizing misses. However, it seems like that was not enough. Last couple of bursts, that oh, red bar is slowly break. shrinking. Another oh break's goodness. gonna seal it. Seth. Oh, first left to go, it's not over yet, but Sun Apple finding the more. Oh my. <laughs> I can't even talk fast enough to handle what's going on here. And Seth, against all odds, not having the accuracy, but having that little bit more combo at the very end of the day, is able to notch this up one to one now. The Seth special skill kicking in. Look at how the great count is just so so different and then look at the misses seth oh, over doubling sun apple's great count um worse ma more goods more bads but under half of the misses and that's what's gonna seal it on this pick i mean we, we called it out sparky but like geez there, there's there's only there's only one uh, term for that that is a combo game moment Oh yeah, combo game moment. Very, very nice score from Seth. This is what we like to see out of him and um, what we expect to see. But it is going to be Sun Apple's pick. 1-1, uh, everything's tied up. He does have another LN. He will go for LN5, Shifu Jinrai. Yeah, like you were saying, I think Sludge was the only other mid game orient i think we're in full late game ln from this point on and i think this is where sun up was really going to shine in terms of their overall physical accuracy on lens in particular yep this is the mixed ln pick um as said by the mapper um and it does have a bit of everything the key eyes when the song speed is up are extremely scary so that is something to watch for. For sure, and both players able to handle that very early sweep, going to a couple of anchor patterns on those outer columns here, and trying to keep that outer column pressed down while you're trying to juggle everything on the other three columns is really uh, difficult to do. You can already see some release timing variants as well as the accuracy start to even up just a little bit. Seth able to eke out a tiny bit of an advantage quickly, even out and cancelled out by Sun Apple. Able to take the lead as the density picks up, but they do find a break on the transition as the density starts to pick up just a little bit. And Seth, as you were saying, able to keep that consistency through this early portion of the map, still holding on to their FC going into the second third of the map despite being at an accuracy deficit. However, with Sun Apple coming back up into that 400 combo cap and also a slight accuracy lead, um, Seth is going to find his lead shrinking little by little and possibly even turn over to Sun Apple if this keeps up. Um, a lot of LN jump drills here, and again, you see how mixed this LN is. It really throws everything at you. 
both players come out of it. But with Sun Apple, he's gonna take three whole misses, and they were quite dirty as well. Um, with the accuracies in this last quarter of the map pretty much even, Seth is gonna have that combo to keep the lead. Yep, last level of map left to go. Sun Apple still misreading some of these patterns. Seth against all odds, holding on to the FC as it stands. A lot of two inches coming out, but at the end of the day, still keeping that miscount to an absolute minimum. Even after the burst, oh, they drop it at the very end, but it's not going to matter. They are going to take the first break point in this match and make it one to two now. Oh, man. And Seth, just amazing performance. One, one or two slider breaks at the end, but able to hold that FC throughout the whole map is just insane. You see the miscount on Sun Apple's side is 10. Um, very, very unexpected that Seth takes a late game pick from Sun Apple. That is so important and really dictates how the rest of the match will shape up. Yep, that is the very much the definition of a Sun Apple score versus a Seth score. Just looking at it, just... Oh my goodness, an absolute show of consistency, able to pull it out of the bag. There are opportunities for Sun Apple to get that breakpoint back. It's not going to be like last week's situation where it was just almost zero overlap between the two players. And Seth is going to opt to go back up into that upper half of the map pool. It is going to be dogs coming out here. And this is a mid-game tech pick coming out from Seth. Um, as if you know him, you know he loves the tech picks. So very unsurprising coming out from him. This is, although it is mid game, it is also almost three and a half minutes long. And there's not a lot of breaks as well. So stamina, I think, plays a very key factor, especially when you're playing tech. It can definitely be hard to keep up. Your eyes get a little blurry, <laughs> your hands get a little shaky. So. Yeah, for sure. Definitely gonna have a lot of room for variants here. Run can get dashed to the wayside in an instant, especially on a map on on a map this long. We'll see how the players do. Right now, out of the gate, both players basically trading blow for blow. 99.6 a piece separated by a couple of 300 counts, and Seth is gonna find the first break here. The consistency on the other foot now. Sun Apple, the one holding onto the full combo, going into the second quarter of the map. And as I said, they do find the drop, trading it back here. Another couple coming out. It's gonna come down to the accuracy, and right now Seth has the advantage going in to the second quarter of the map. Yeah, and this is Seth's domain, right? You see Sun Apple taking a couple misses here and there. Seth is gonna trade it back. However, overall, I think Seth is gonna have a bit of a lead both combos are basically reset however that bar is very very slightly blue as we finish up with the first third of the map um, we do get a small little break about halfway in however after that it's pretty much full-on a tech onslaught very well said and then i'm gonna find another break on the transition going into a bit of a break section here not the most ideal place to drop so that's going to be able to build a bit of an advantage here based off the fact that they are over that 400 combo cap going to get full credit for their judgments here going into the back half of the map the accuracy in favor of sun apple but that miscount the ever important miscount that seth has been banking on in their favor as we continue through here a tenth of a percent the lead for sun apple in the accuracy department but the score advantage it's definitely in Seth's court right now. Yeah, and Ooh. wow, that speed section spared no one there. Both players taking a miss. Sun Apple with an extra one. However, it is going to be Seth's lead as he Sun Apple does find another break in the mini jack section. It is very, very hard to contend with. And you see here. There's a lot of trills and a lot of mini jacks. Sun Apple gonna take another miss as Seth finds his way towards the combo cap. Yeah, crossing and now able to grow their lead just a little bit here. And it just feels like one of these stories where it's like Sun Apple's finding these misses. Seth is trading them for a rush of bad judgments every now and again. But right now, the comfort level definitely on Seth's side as it's now a two, uh, two tenths advantage for Seth going into the last sliver of map. And it will take an absolute collapse here at the very end. 
to try and give Sun Apple any hope of getting this breakpoint back. That's a start there. That is a big start. However, there's not a lot of map left. You're gonna need to see some more misses out of Seth's side. However, with the way this match has been going, it doesn't seem likely at all. Seth is gonna take his lead and run even further away with it as Sun Apple takes a couple drops in the last couple of notes. And Seth is gonna go up 3-1. Crazy score, crazy run. No 100s, no 50s from Seth. Just a couple of rushes of 200s, a couple of misses. And in those exchanges, Seth has been coming out uh, much better overall as the pick goes back over to Sun Apple. You imagine going to dive back down into the LNs, wasting zero time. It's going to be an I and I LN to the pick here. Yep, Inai Inai, again, another late game pick. This is going to be kind of releases, um, <laughs> as you can see from the difficulty name. And it was used in the MWC 2017 finals. Yeah, Juan Crystal. Uh, whenever you see that name and you hear late game, uh, the first thing you should think of, timing hell. This is very much a release test. This is about as crazy as you can get without making it too overbearing and even then at certain points it can definitely feel overbearing if you're not up to snuff with your ln seals uh both these players definitely uh capable of doing this it's just who comes out with that better accuracy and keeps that miscount to an absolute minimum and with the ever-changing slew of ln releases it's just so hard to keep up with Gonna expect to see a lot of bad judgments, especially coming out of set side, I believe, during this map. However, misses again are gonna be the key factor, and Sun Apple is gonna take that first miss. Yeah, despite that, the accuracies are still basically neck and neck. It's as we've been saying throughout this match, it feels like Sun Apple gets those misses and Seth trades them back with a rush of bad judgments. And right now, as it stands, Sun Apple finding another miss. They were about to take it just based on accuracy alone, but that one's going to set the marker uh, for this introduction. Advantage to Seth for right now, despite being behind about three tenths of a percent. Oh boy, and. Just the amount of accuracy lead that Sun Apple has had for the majority of this um, set Ooh, has been... Goes. Oh, and another one as well. Wow, and a third to boot. Three times, third time's a charm. Seth is going to find a couple of breaks as Sun Apple has been quite comfortable besides the, those first couple of breaks. And as I say that, he is going to take another miss. However, that bar is still red and it is still Sun Apple's um lead yeah very much overall you see those misses they're very clean overall you see sun apple this fight uh dropping quite a couple of times still in that 98 percent range seth falling down into that 97 percent range gonna give sun apple a bit of an advantage to work with here as they both break it over the 400 combo cap and as i say that sun apple finds another break here going into the back half of the map we're clocking in at about a minute and 30 so far throughout this map but as it stands, Sun Apple still holding on to the advantage here. It, I usually say whenever misses are involved, it's about four tenths of a percent to overcome them and maintain the lead. And right now, Sun Apple holding on to that buffer to keep Seth at bay going to the last third of the map. Yeah, Sun Apple not doing too well at that inverse section. Seth on this release section gonna take another miss. So Sun Apple's lead is guaranteed for a bit. However, both players are gonna reset. And Sun Apple taking another one to boot in this final third of the map. Yeah, I always like to say whenever things are this close, these trades only help Sun Apple, especially that last one here, last quarter of the map. Going to be able to mitigate some of the damage here, especially since that dropped as well. Not able to capitalize on that per particularly dirty miss from there. Dropping on one of the anchors as well, make, able to transition into a 50. So no real harm done there, but this lead is shrinking. It is very precarious. And Sun Apple going to find a break on the break before things pick up once again. Last eighth of the map to go. And now things are going to change here in just a little bit. We're going back over to the blue side set with the advantage as it stands before the density starts to pick up once again. However, Seth is going to find yet another drop. Sun Apple taking a couple of nasty and misfortunate misses in the break section. Pretty slow, but Seth is going to trade it back. A couple more misses on his side. And as oh the goodness. ending 
is nearing. The scores are gonna get really, really close. That act is shaping up to be pretty much tied, and with it, Seth is going to take this point, it seems. Oh my goodness, against all odds, Sanapo was winning that map for the better part of two minutes. It was just that ending section that really caught them off guard there. And Seth going to be able to pick up yet another break point here and make it 4-1 to one now. Wow, and it is not something I'd expect out of Seth to take two break points on what is considered late game um, LN picks, but just... The results screen just tell everything where, you know, that mis-minimization by Seth, it's like a special power. Yeah, for sure. They've kept it up their sleeve, and that consistency has been pulling them through uh, so far during this match. And it is going to be their next pick, you'd imagine. Yeah, without a doubt, going back up into the upper half of the map pool, it's going to be Nakam and Core coming out here. Oh boy, Nachman Core. Um, again, if you guys are familiar with this year's MWC, this was used in the qualifiers. However, it was just part one, which was the first three minutes. This one, um, don't look at the length. This is actually three minutes and 37 seconds. Uh, just, oh, just, really, yeah. <laughs> just really long. Uh, breaks in the beginning and the end because of you know the unfinished map but it is 230 stamina jump stream so yeah this was used i'm not sure if uh, she's edited it since the mwc qualifiers but this was this song was used in mwc this year as uh one of the rice qualifiers very hard uh very easy to get lost in the streams. Thankfully, both players opting to skip that introduction as we make our way through, and both of them are going to be neck and neck. This is something a little bit uh, easier to manage if you can hold on to the speed. It really just does become a bit of a stamina test at the end of the day, and right now, Sanapa winning that battle overall, about a tenth of a percent the lead in this introduction. That should be changing as the map progresses and the players start to wear out just a little bit here, and it's going to come down to who can keep that miscount to an absolute minimum. And so far, Seth is going to take that first miss. Sun Apple playing really well at a 99.77, whereas Seth is a whole percent below him. So that stamina seems like he can't keep up for now. However, time will tell as we get into this uh, second third of the map. Yeah, 99.75 for Sun Apple, 98.9. Seth going to climb back up instead of 99. Uh, percent range before too long, but right now the damage is being done. Sun Apple still holding on to the FC here. Seth finally back up with that 400 combo cap, gonna be able to recover a little bit as the 200 starts to come out from Sun Apple, but they are keeping up to an absolute minimum as it stands. Still on course for a 990,000. As I said, it does find a little bit of damage going into the back half of the map, but still able to keep Seth at bay for the moment. Yeah, with the broken jump stream section that we just passed through, Sun Apple did take quite a bit of a hit to his accuracy, while Seth is still trying to climb back up as we get into yet another pretty hard section. Um, this song always constantly switching up on you, it seems. It seems like Sun Apple is still feeling pretty good about it. The song taking a couple of greats here and there, however, a pretty generous lead at that. Yeah, things are gonna go by the wayside if they do manage to find a drop in this last third, but so far, still able to hold on to the FC. Seth not too far behind, able to close the gap just a little bit here, 99.2 and climbing. Sun Apple, like you said in that last section, able to take a bit of damage uh, in the 200 counts, but still able to keep the accuracy lead going to the last quarter of the map, and it's basically just more broken jump stream. I feel like the pattern starts to break up just a little bit here, test the finger control just a little bit here, eh? and transitioning between the jumps is going to be of the, of the utmost importance as both players uh, uh, over 2,000 combos, so i cresting that 3,000 combo mark, still holding on to the FC here, last eighth of the map to go. Yeah, this section is so brutal and it's so important right now for Sun Apple to keep that combo because it feels like with one or two misses, 
that bar's gonna swing over to the other side. So as we get into this last portion of the map, both players... Oh, and there's a drop! Oh! And such a huge drop for Sun Apple, just like I said. However, it does not seem like that's gonna be enough at all. We're gonna need to see a couple more if Seth wants to take this point. Finally, in the last couple of measures in the map, Sun Apple with a nice about 4k lead here as he gets back up to the combo cap. The bleeding will stop for him. However, as we get into the last couple of notes, oh, nothing doing. Oh my goodness, I was holding my breath for that last section. I didn't want to say anything less. I cursed Sun Apple. That was one miss away from being a complete disaster for them. But they are able to take back one of those breakpoints and make it 4 to 2 now. Definitely much needed from Sun Apple. And a very good breakpoint to take to boot as well. I asked Sun Apple what kind of maps he would be looking to take on the right side of things against Seth. And stamina was something that he did mention because he felt like Seth did not have very good stamina comparatively. So yeah, worked out in their favor there and they're gonna opt to pick the first hybrid of this match. It is gonna be Azure Vixen as featured in last year's uh, Mania World Cup, I think Sun Apple is very practiced on this because I think this was one of the maps that they were slated to go up for if needed. So I uh, can definitely expect to see a pretty decent score coming from them. If they can maintain that consistency, Seth going to opt to try and take another breakpoint. They are on two breakpoints over Sun Apple. Gave back over one. See how they can do here. Oh, and an early break from Sun Apple here. Start this map off. Yeah, a bit of a misfire from Sun Apple's side. However, it's not it's not the worst thing in the world because this this map I would say is pretty much the most LN focus as Sun Apple does take yet another miss. This map again is I would say yeah pretty much has the most LNs in terms of ratio. Testify as a hybrid. Is very very rice focused and Saihate is the other hybrid where there's a couple of good LN sections. Yeah, for sure. And as it stands, that's finally gonna find a break here going into the second quarter of the map. But the damage has been done out of that introduction. A healthy cushion for them to work with right now, as it is about six tenths of a percent. Uh, the lead for them in terms of accuracy. San Apple is climbing back up over that 99% mark, and there's still a pretty decent chunk of the map still to go, especially on those LN sections. You can imagine San Apple going to be able to make the climb uh, once those sections start to pick up in density. Yeah, and for this map, I don't think Sun Apple should be too worried because there is a very, very large LN focused key eye about three fourths of the way in. So anything can happen in that last fourth of the map. For sure, and right now it's on Apple with the combo lead here. Both of them up with after 400 combo caps, so no real swings are going to happen unless that finds a massive drop in accuracy. A couple of impact releases on the LN. Both players handling them relatively well. The bursts in between are what we're focused on. Very chokeable in between. Uh, those impacts and both players handling it very well. Oh yeah, those person jacks are very, very hard. But both players surviving through it very well. And here's that LNKI I was talking about. This is where dreams are made and broken. And right now, both players handling it very well. Both players holding on to the FCs through this section. Uh, they have both found breaks, but as it stands, we need or Sun Apple is looking for Seth to find a break in this section, but they are not giving them an inch to work with here as the map reaches its conclusion here. It is accuracy tied. Sun Apple is going to be the one finding the break here, and that is the reprieve Seth needed. Sun Apple is hot on their tails, and they are going to be able to hold them off here, but Seth finding a break. Not wow. a lot of map left, though. Seth doing so well, trading with Sun Apple pound for pound on that LNK I was talking about, doing just as well as he did and holding on just barely enough to secure that victory over Sun Apple. Oh my goodness, I was very close, keeping those miscounts to an absolute minimum. You wonder if Sun Apple had a cleaner start, they might have been able to close that 8,000 point gap. That is a question for another time. Leave it to the hypothetical. Seth is now up 5-2. to two. 
and it is going to be his pick as well. Um, Seth has a lot of places to play with because it is quite a large rice map. There are seven total besides the ban. So I believe we have rice one, two, and four. And also his protect at rice six as well. That's oh, true. Anti-function is still on the board. So I need to note, did you notice they had the same Marvelous count? Yeah. <laughs> 25 pen a piece. And the just, 300 just counts weren't that... <laughs> they are, as you said earlier, trading blow for blow. It's just Seth coming out just that little bit ahead in the exchanges and Seth gonna opt to go for their protect. Anti-function going to be coming out here. And this map is definitely... I can see why Seth protected it, because it's so, so truly... It's actually insane. Yeah, this is one of those uh, raw skill level of maps where if you have the capability to play something like this, you have the capability to play a lot of varying rice charts. This definitely uh, can be a very unfun experience if you aren't uh, used to tech like this, and I'm going to find a break very early on here. Oh yeah, and it looks like Sun Apple is not having fun on this map, as you said. This map is just so hard. You see all of the trills. You like two-hand trills? We've got two-hand trills. Every single, <laughs> every single measure has something for you. For sure, and right out of the gate, Sun Apple dropping down into that 96% range, just trying to hang on for right now. And Seth, uh, cool as a cucumber, 99.4, just chilling right now. As we make our way into the second quarter of the map, the density eases up just a little bit, but it definitely still warrants your full attention as you make your way through. Oh, definitely. One misread on the trill section can end your run on this map. So. Sun Apple's still in it. Seth is going to take a miss, so that lead is going to decrease just a little bit. Sun Apple finding a couple of ways in as the map goes on and we get on to the second half of it. Yeah, so the back half of the map to go. Sun Apple climbing back up to that 98% range. Seth uh, still in that 99.4 range, has not changed much despite that miss, gonna be able to hit that 400 combo cap relatively soon. As I say, they find another drop, and that's really where the damage is gonna start. They trade once again, and these trades only help Seth in this regard. Keep Sun Apple at bay from trying to uh, climb too far. A super, super abrasive drill section, very, very long as well. Both players are gonna find a ton of bad judgments. However, Seth is gonna come out on top as it stands after the trades are done. Sun Apple, another miss. That's not going to help him as this lead is just enormous for Seth. Yeah, for sure. Last eighth of the map to go. Sun Apple finding another drop. That's probably going to be the nail in the coffin for this run. And as it stands, Seth going to be taking this to match point. Six to two now. Oh yeah, as this map closes out, you have to wonder what Sun Apple needs to pull out to get to that tiebreaker point. Because, I mean, three breakpoints from Seth is such a large boon. It's it's hard to say what Sun Apple wants to go for. It's got, yeah, it's got to be another LN pick. And yeah, well, it wasn't wise. hard for Sun Apple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, there was no world in which they would try and tempt fate in any uh, regard uh, too wise for you going to be uh, the pick here another NWC map coming out and I I believe they actually did play in this uh, map during uh, their match I forget who it was against I believe it was Team UK in semi-finals weekend trying to recall off the top of my head but do yeah. believe that uh, base rate was this year's MWC semis and I think it was against UK but Sun Apple got almost a 991 on base rate for this pick yeah that's, that's disgusting this is a 1.15 so a 
tiny bit harder, but I mean, we'll see how they do. It's an Apple do or die situation back against the wall. Needs to win this and a couple of break points to try and get themselves to a tiebreaker at the absolute minimum. And with the familiarity, I really think that Sun Apple does have what it takes to at least get a couple more points out of this pool. And especially on this one as well. This is the Allen Density pick, so I think that Seth might have a couple of misses just like right now. A slew of bad judgments as well as Sun Apple is sitting pretty at a 99.6. Yeah, able to handle that. Three column drill did drop a couple of 200s at the end, found a bit of a rush, but it pales in comparison to the difficulty Seth is having. They do finally break that full combo, finding a couple of misses here, but traded by Seth. And in these exchanges, the shoe is on the other foot. Sun Apple benefiting uh, from these trades as Seth drops down into that 97% range. Sun Apple not too far behind, 98% for them. Both of them able to handle that jump troll relatively well as we get into a bit of a lighter section before things start to pick up once again. Oh yeah, and as we pick up in the density, you can see just how good Sun Apple is on maps like these. Just immaculate accuracy coming out from him, while Seth is going to find a couple of drops and a couple of crates to go with it. Yeah, for sure, dropping down into that 96% range. You'd imagine they're going to climb back up into the 97s before too long. Sun Apple finding. A uh, couple of rushes here uh, can be expected. This map uh, being very dense as it is very easy to miss rate, especially when those one hand trills start to come out. But out of the transitions, last of the map still to go. This is a comfortable about 40,000 point lead for Sun Apple to work with. Both players doing really well out of that jump trill. However, Sun Apple is going to find two misses, still holding a very large accuracy lead out of Seth, but another couple of misses out of him and we're gonna see that lead drop by just a little bit yes that does finally trade it back and they're basically missing at the exact same time three times in a row they have broken on basically the exact same note that finally finds an extra drop uh to boot here there is not a lot of map left it is about a percent advantage for sun apple it was a little, a little dicey at times but i think sun apple had the advantage going throughout that map and they are going to stay alive for at least one more pick and it is now six to three the miscounts oh my goodness yeah finally we see almost similar miscounts and when that happens sun apple is going to take the point because as you can see you look to the great counts <laughs> oh my god uh, yeah <laughs> about, about four times as many 200s and Despite all the trades, uh, Seth still having a lower miscount. <laughs> yeah, just just absolute insanity. But um, <laughs> Sun Apple gonna take that third point. So Seth, <laughs> alrighty, go ahead in the pool. No. The one I didn't want to pick. This is Drake Found Dead, 1994, and it is 32 seconds long. And just, I think um, these are quotes. So they are 360 BPM streams. Dear Lord, I can't believe this made it into the pool. Unsurprising, this is both of these players' favorite map of all time. They, Whenever these two are map pooling, this song, this chart, manages to find its way into the pools. It always somehow slithers in. I think it was in the deep TBM pool sheet. Something I, like that. I, I, <laughs> it, it, it was in the round of 64 pool. It was in the round of 32 pool. It was in the grand finals pool. Seth is playing with hard rock. What are we doing here, guys? What are we doing? I, Seth honestly, wins this with hard rock. I, I'm leaving. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh dear lord, no, not like this. Sun Apple, come on. He's on OD10. Come on, man. There's only a half the map left to go. They're tied in accuracy. But Seth, with his ungodly ability to maintain combo, is still somehow ahead. And as I say that the accuracy is to drop, Sun Apple takes the lead going into the last quarter of the map. They need to hold on here. They cannot afford the break. They find the break. And as I say that, Sun oh my goodness, they're trading. Oh my god, it is over. Thank God. <laughs> No more base boost. <laughs> Finally passed this map. Oh my god, almost a one-to-one -one MA out of Seth. That is what you love to see.
That is that is the pick of all time. Kudos to Seth for playing with Hard Rock. Uh, it was not worth it, as they said. It is now six to four. Another breakpoint going the way of Sun Apple. There are only two hybrids left in this pool. Oh, it boy. is going to be Saihate. <laughs> um, <laughs> Seth just looking very generous right now. I mean, I've always known him as a philanthropist, but I mean, to give Sun Apple a breakpoint like that is just. Truly insane. Such a golden heart from him. Sun Apple gonna go with Saihate. 1.05. This is, that, um, yeah, yeah, go you ahead. Know, there, there are so many NFL teams that need a good punter, and by god, that was such a good punt by Seth. <laughs> I mean, you could probably draft him as a quarterback too, because I mean, that, that was such a good throw as well, right? Absolutely. But with that being said, we are going to opt to go back into the less silly picks overall. It is going to be Hybrid 2 coming out. Sun Apple still on that path for the comeback. They need to win this and Seth next pick to force the tiebreaker here. And I am receiving word that they are both singing this at the moment in their VC. Uh, just a channel above us. They are right next to us and singing this song as they play. Sun Apple gonna find the first couple of misses. It's important to note that this is the most rice oriented hybrid compared to Testify and Azura Vixen. So it's just something to note. However, the Allen sections are very segmented from the rice. Um, so maybe we'll see a bit of an accuracy drop when that comes in. However, this map is extremely hard on the right sections with 155 BPM core jacks. Oh, and then that last jump trail going into this next section. That was holding on to the lead for a little bit here. It's been that tail of these two players, Sun Apple, with the accuracy advantage. And as these LN sections start to come in, you would imagine they're going to be able to pull away for just a little bit here. As I say, they do find a slider break, and that does decrease the lead just a little bit. Seth, Apple with 500 combo cap, immediately going to be able to take the lead, especially on that next drop. Last third of the map still to go, and it is about half a percent for Sun Apple to work with. Any drops here, like that last one from Seth, is going to be huge in Sun Apple's quest to try and maintain uh, this match. Oh man, Sun so, so Apple taking a couple more misses on the Korjak sections. You hate to see it, Sun so Apple. You should have played Mommy Raps a couple more times than you should have. And oh Seth's goodness. lead is going to grow and almost overtaking the accuracy lead as well as this map closes out. Oh, Seth's finding another drop. Another couple of drops and the lead immediately goes swinging over to Sun Apple. Last little map left to go. Can they handle this last couple of bursts here? Everything's going to calm down just a little bit. Able to be read through and Sun Apple looked very dicey there is gonna stay alive and make it six to five now wow sun apple the phantom thief snatching that map point out of nowhere how did he get that one i i, I look at the 200 counts then i look at the miss counts and I started to wonder how the hell the scoring system works in this game. I think it came down to a rush of 100 from Seth to separate them by that 8,000 point gap that we have been seeing. And it's going to be Rice 2. Rice 2 to decide whether or not we will see a tiebreaker. This is Hyper Weeaboo Vodka Shots. Um, or if you might know it, um, by the name of Yamada Stream by Danny PX as well. This is 255 BPM jump stream, but the break sections are not uh, one to slouch on as they are very, very difficult as well. Yeah, not a long map by any stretch of the imagination either. Minute 54. This is going to be the map that'll determine what happens next. I feel like 
you start to wonder if that rice one pick starts to work out, especially with that early break here. Gonna hand Sun up a bit of an advantage to work with right out of the gate. See if they can capitalize. These streams are very awkward to read through. Oh, for sure. This jump stream is extremely hard. Seth at a 99, Sun Apple very comfortable at a 99.6. Gonna take another break on the side of Seth to increase Sun Apple's lead. Yeah, whole percent to work with right now and still holding on to the FC. And you start to wonder, can Sun Apple hold? Well, second, third of the map still to come. But right now, this is about 20,000 points and counting. Can swing in an instant. You just need one bad section to swing things the other way. But as it stands, Seth able to mitigate some of the bleeding here. Up with that 400 combo cap. Sun Apple still holding on to the FC. Very important. As it stands, Seth does find another drop. And that's going to help grow the lead. This is the largest cushion Sun Apple has had to work with on a rice chart. Uh, in quite a minute, Rice won uh, notwithstanding, but last third of the map to go. And it's looking like Sun Apple is poised to take this into tiebreaker. He is determined. Seth, you have to wonder if Stamina is playing a huge part right now. We did see um, him, I believe, lose the Stamina point, right? So taking that into account, I mean, as the set goes on and on, tiebreaker might become an issue for him. Yeah, for sure. Last level of map left to go. And if there was ever a time... Oh my goodness, I pre... I precursed him. I was about to say if there was ever a time to get the FC, now would be the time. But regardless, Sun Apple doing just enough to hold Seth at bay. And we are at the pinnacle. We are at 6-6. Six to six. This is a tremendous occasion, and would you believe it, the tiebreaker map for this show match is going to be tremendous. Yep, this is tremendous by our good friend Mint. Shout out Mint. And it was this year's MWC Finals tiebreaker. I did have to check if Sun Apple um, had any experience on this map, however, their match against Malaysia did not go into tiebreaker, so... They did not play this map at all. Yeah, stolen courtesy of GTS. Always appreciate the Tyco Sound team making uh, or commissioning stuff like this for us to be able to map. <laughs> that being said, hardest map in the pool, longest one by, by some margin, seven minutes clocking in here. Oh yeah, we're we're in for a very very good map. This is definitely gonna be super exciting to see because honestly, I'm not sure about the map. This is the one map that I didn't watch the whole thing for. Um, we're gonna have to see how many LN sections there are for Sun Apple to play with, and how hard this Rice will get for Seth to hold combo on. Yeah, for sure. There's going to be a bit of a consistency test as well as a stamina test for these players. You start to wonder what the momentum must be feeling like. You start, you start to harken back. This was 6-2 to two at one point in favor of Seth. And Sun Apple has fought back. Going to find an early break here. Going to hand Seth a tiny bit of an advantage. But right now their actions are virtually tied. 99.1, 99.2 uh, before any of the real... Uh, meat of the map has started. Oh yeah, but I... This definitely isn't going to be the last miss we're gonna see. Um, <laughs> as we see another miss from Sun Apple, so still somehow keeping combo at a 99.34. He's super, super comfortable. As Sun Apple lagging behind just a little bit on both accuracy and combo. It's a very good mix section, so test both players very well but as yeah. it stands Seth finally gonna take that first break but that bar probably isn't gonna swing over to the other side unless he takes a couple more yeah for sure that being said that was quite a bit of a rough section for Seth losing the accuracy lead 
they are able to make it back up with that 400 combo cap, so not going to be giving up too much more ground as it stands. Second quarter of the map upcoming, it is about a tenth of a percent for Sun Apple. Four right now, it is separated by maybe a couple hundred points right now as they make their way through this section. A lot of very rough mini jacks to contend with. Both of them trading misses at different times. Sun Apple finding an extra one in the break between the drops. Yeah, and with both players not at that 400 cap, it really begins to become a game of combo. And as you can see from both players, neither one can really keep it up. These sections are just way too dense to contend with. But Seth actually finding a bit of footing here, albeit with a couple of bad judgments. They did find a break as well, but in those trades, Sun Apple faring a little bit worse for wear, still able to hold on to the accuracy lead. These misses have been very clean in comparison to Seth, both of them trading once again as the as they both start to take a little bit of damage here. It's still separated by the finest of margins. That's a big one from Seth, and the lead's gonna be able to trade over to Sun Apple's side for the time being. Second third of the map upcoming. It is three tenths of a percent the lead for them to work with. Now up over that 400 combo cap, and this break is not gonna catch Sun Apple out for the moment as Seth tries to recover now. Yeah, and I believe this is Sun Apple's first lead ever since the beginning because he had that very, very early break. And another one right now, as we get into the speed up section, Seth finally at the 400 mark. Sun Apple is going to need to climb back, but is reset on the ladder here. Finally, finally, Seth will regain that lead little by little. Yeah, those curls are very hard to work with. Seth finally misses. Sun Apple trades it back here, but in these exchanges, you start to wonder if Sun Apple, based on the accuracy lead that they have managed to grow here, is able to tank some of the damage here. They are trading back and forth once again. Neither player wants to hold on to combo in this section. Can't blame them. It's very, very hard to read through some of these patterns as they make their way into the back half of the map. They are now three minutes into this map with no signs of stopping. And as we steam throughout the set, Seth with a combo lead and Sun Apple with the accuracy lead, but that bar is slightly towards Seth's side and it's going to be even more towards Seth as Sun Apple does find a break. Seth has been doing so well so far, sitting at almost 900 combo. Yeah, that has really been these little sections where Seth is up over that 400 combo cap and Sun Apple is and have been making all the difference. Uh, for the moment, those really start to bite you as the map gets deeper and deeper. I think this is the largest margin we have seen, and the fact that we're able to say that, and it's only about 2,000 points, is a testament to how good and consistent both of these players are. Sun Apple finding another break here, going into the last third of the map, about to be the last quarter. It is about two tenths of a percent in the advantage for them here, but Seth is not finding a break. They are holding. Sun Apple is dropping. They do manage to find a trade here, but these trades only help Seth for the time being as the density starts to pick up here. And Seth is currently doing what he does best, just keeping combo as Sun Apple again and again finds a couple of misses. We're in the last fourth of the map, and finally we have a combo reset out of both of them. The lead is about 7,000 points but it's still anyone's game here at this last PI. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like this might be a little bit too much for Sun Apple. The thing that Seth likes to do is they like to ramp up the difficulty and force themselves to read through some dense maps uh, in practice. And I think this is paying off in fades for them as it stands. Last eighth of the map to go. The lead has extended to about 8,000 points. It's going to take a bit of a collapse here in this last section from set to hand. Sun Apple, any inroads at the start? But that Sun Apple is the pack. start. We are going to need to see a little bit more in this LN section. However, with a combo reset, it's not going to help Sun Apple in any shape or form. Yeah, all these gluts starting to come out, these mini jacks as well. Very abrasive to read through, especially since you've been playing for well over six minutes now. The stamina really starts to go, and you start to wonder what the reactions are as this map gets later and later. As we said, they are both in a voice call together right now. You can imagine as this map starts to draw to an end, they're starting to call out their misses here. It is about 12,000 points of difference. Seth finding another couple of breaks, but I feel like the writing is on the wall right now. 
the accuracy advantage in favor of Sun Apple, but at the end of the day, this is a combo game after all. This last section, very hard to read through. Both of them missing back and forth here. Oh, that blue bar is decreasing little by little, but it's just not going to be enough for Sun Apple. Bar a huge explosion on Seth's end. No, it's not going to be so. And as we get on these final notes, Sun Apple is going to lose to Seth in tiebreaker. Seven to six. Able to make the combat to at least force the tiebreaker, but it is not going to be enough. That miscount, despite the 200s, an equal 100 count. That miscount and that consistency from Seth, keeping them just above water. And they are going to take this show match 7-6. to six. Oh yeah, what, what a fitting final score from both of them. For but, sure. <laughs> I mean, well played. Uh, good game, well played to Sun Apple and Seth. I'm sure no bad feelings whatsoever. Definitely a fun experience. Um, for yeah, sure. Great job, Seth. Congrats on winning this week's BSM Brawl. Yeah, credit to the Map Pool team putting this one together. Felt very balanced. Uh, Rice 1 does not count as a map, but everything else fantastic uh thank you to bonk me for streaming this uh thank you dina for joining me in the commentary booth always a pleasure oh yeah always a pleasure commentating with you sparky so thank you too and also thank you to so stereo for your repping as well yes almost forgot thank you so stiff for uh repping this one and as always unless you have anything else to say no Nothing else to say. Good game, well played, and we'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, y'all.